Hey guys, welcome back to Mediocre Painting with me, Wayne. Today I'm going to show you how to use pigments in a very easy manner that I only recently found out about. I subscribed to Mig Jimenez's channel, Ammo of Mig, and uh, he actually was demonstrating this technique, which apparently he just found out about. Because we've always struggled with applying dry pigments in miniature gaming. Because if you use a brush, they tend to just fall off the model and disappear. Um, so he told, said that the trick to getting these applied is using a rubber tipped brush. And so I said, you know, bullshit, that's not going to work. And I was wrong. It does work. It works very well. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Some things I've been explaining, some things I've been doing here recently. I got my trusty show y'all how to do shit tank here. So we're going to do some edging to show, do some weathering around these tracks and stuff. So a little bit of irony in that Mig Jimenez was who I got this technique from when I'm using his old company, AK Pigments, in this video. Uh, if you ever see this Mig, I'm sorry. Um, I doubt you'll ever watch this though. So AK pigments are just fine. Any pigments are fine for this. So what we're going to do is, as you can see, this is a dry powder inside. These are pigments and old school guys will make washes out of this stuff. Um, I'm lazy. I don't do that. Uh, but this works really cool for weathering. So what you do is you dip your your rubber tipped brush in there and you just get a little bit on that brush tip and it doesn't fall off very easy. So let's see if I can get this in frame. So what we're going to do is take this rubber brush and push it right along the edge here as though the paint's been worn away on this strip, like a high friction area. And as you can see, it's a subtle effect, but it's there. We can see like it's exposed metal on this. The really cool thing to do with this is like sword blades for fantasy miniatures or things like this. I just happen to have this and I thought I'd show up pretty good on a camera. You just blow off the excess and you rub that off. And you get a little bit of a metal effect, like it's showing through the paint. Now, this is quick weathering. This is not something you'd want to do probably for a model you're putting in a competition because it's very obviously that the depth is not there. But for tabletop level miniatures, AKA mediocre style, this is good. So we're going to do some, uh, burnt rust red we're gonna do some red on here to look like some rust streaks to go from pigment to pigment if you want to use the same brush just uh rinse your brush off in water it's gonna stain it because the pigment grinds into the fine pores but it's still good to use so we got some rust here And as you can see, it gives a subtle rust streak effect that you can kind of play with and smudge with your finger, or you can use a Q-tip. And there's all kinds of effects you can achieve with this if you just want mud or anything. And it's just there. And it just gives you t your vehicle just a little bit extra. Over the years, I've experimented with them here and there. I think I bought my first pigments probably 10 years ago and I've used them sparingly and I haven't even touched a quarter of the bottle. So like a bottle like this is gonna last you a really long time. Now, if you dump it out and like, of course it's gonna empty quicker. There are uh, pigment fixers that you can use. This is dark earth and do some mud effects. Um, 
pigment fixer will like make this like stick to the model even better. Uh, pigment fixer is usually in a jar just like this, and it'll say pigment fixer. Various brands make them. Uh, Vallejo makes them. Mig makes them. AK makes them. Um, I think uh, secret weapon, and it's just a, a liquid. Um, old school uh, gamers, old school modeling guys will use um, just uh, IPA rubbing alcohol, and pigment fixer is some derivative of that. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with the pigment fixer. I've used it a couple times. Um, the biggest problem I've encountered with pigment fixer has been my pigment disappears because it's wet. It's a wet medium. So you actually like really have to like get it on there um, to get the effect to come through. So uh, for, my, uh, for my purposes and what I do, uh, just the dry application now with this rubber brush because it actually is grinding it into um, the porous surface of the model. So you get a nice dirt weathered effect on there and it takes no time and um, this is something you can use in lieu of enamel weathering especially because this is so quick and there's no dry time and then you just move on to your next step so uh, just another tool in your toolbox of all your uh, painting techniques you can clear coat the model after you're done but also um, some of this might disappear a little bit with clear coats. That's always been an issue with pigments is depending on how close you spray your clear coat from, um, it can actually like blast some of it off the surface. But with the rubber brush technique, it doesn't do it as much because it's not just sitting on the surface. Like if it would, if you just brushed it on with a regular brush, it's actually ground in. And like me, I'm, I'm sitting here actively trying to rub this off and it's still there. So this is uh, not nearly as fragile of a technique um, as, as I initially thought that it was. I always associated pigment use with like competition grade modeling, not stuff you're going to push around a tabletop, uh, whereas you actually really could with this. It's not going anywhere. And it's all because of these cheap ass rubber tipped uh, brushes. <laughs> that I would have never used in a hundred years had not I seen this in a video of another modeler doing it. So um, you're welcome and uh, enjoy all the techniques you can do because there's a whole range of pigments out there. I'm excited to try out some of the fantasy ones from Aptilon. Uh They have like a laser blast blue and a couple of other like um, neat sci-fi fantasy colors that I'm going to be messing around with on some, some Eldar models. So um, I hope you've enjoyed. And this is your tip of the day.